interrupting this current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 380. I hope. Yeah, Cricketude Busting, only if you step up, stop being crickets. Didn't get much uh, response about writing a letter even, so that's not looking too good. We can't even write a letter to defend ourselves. Are we going to keep that republic? I don't know. But we'll continue here anyway. And uh, I want to address a couple of uh, comments again. As I go through, more and more comments are coming through slowly. That's pretty nice. At least I get to hear what you're, is on, uh, on your mind. And we can kind of move along and make corrections or make adjustments as we can. Over at BitChute, thank you. Over at the Walrus account for posting last week's, I think it was last week's broadcast. Happened to see that. I'm not real good at adept at all the social media stuff, so sometimes I miss things, but. The comment was made on the issue of the COVID and SARS-CoV-2 that the Koch postulates have not been fulfilled for either. And I said, uh, yeah, that's right. There's no science. You're right. I've made that comment and observation before. This is um, part of the problem of this stuff going on this long. I don't want to repeat all this stuff over and over. So you're, you're absolutely right. There is no science. Not only have they not identified the infectious agent, they don't even and can't and define what the mode of transmission is to make anything that's being used relevant uh, as far as a measure to countermeasure to stop the spread. I'm talking about that not to say, oh, look at all what we, no, look at how knowledgeable I am or you are or we are. You have to use that to counter how they're oppressing you. And we, I've read court cases through the through the months to show you that they even the courts even recognize this as a standard. I'm not just saying these things just to say, hear me say them, or have you hear me say them, or you even hear them. It's that you take this information and you show how anything that they're trying to do is not valid in law, it's not supported in law, it's not valid anyway, and any mitigation measure could not be known to stop the spread. Therefore, every mitigation measure is arbitrary and capricious if not criminal, and I tend to want to run over to the criminal. Anything unwarranted done by an official to unlawfully take your your property, your rights, is felony. And so this is, I don't, I just want to make, make sure people don't, don't get lost in this. I'm not just talking about the news here. This broadcast has been set up to take people that are officials, as best I understand you can do it until I'm shown different and better, to learn how to take them behind the woodshed. And that's so, you're right, a perfect, there's no science. So now we have them, if we just would step up. So thank you for the comment. Thank you for rebroadcasting the um, the last week's broadcast on your channel. I appreciate that. I don't I don't have that, you know, that coverage. So any, any help in that regard is, is appreciated. Over at uh, BitChute uh, Walrus, a whole bunch of different stuff is posted by by her, I, I assume it's a her. But um, uh, over at Mines, and thank you very much for kind, of, you know, looking through there. That's really kind of been a mess over there for me. I don't understand what I'm even looking at anymore at Mines. Actually, looking like a lot like Twitter, but I don't integrate very well with it apparently, and it doesn't integrate with me. But anyway, I did get some comment. Uh, some uh, an account called Paramagic. Thank you for though that that information. I just want to point out to you. And I have to question whether or not you're actually listening to what I'm saying uh, relative to your comment. And there's a whole lot that you did say in many, for a couple of weeks here. Yeah, but the top of it was, how could uh, a new world order be propagated? And then you uh, going on to the end and said, give yourself five minutes and listen to the short explanation to understand how you are being enslaved. And then you gave a link to uh, David Icke, which... I have commented to one of his broadcasts once where he was explaining the fraud of COVID. But if you listen to my broadcast, you'll say I'm, you'll see and listen, I'm beyond what David Icke would prepare for you. I don't care uh, whether or not we got lizard people or aliens or whatever, whoever the Zionistas doing this to us. I've identified an infrastructure system that you can take down if you just start applying the laws. It's not an excuse where this is coming from. I not only understand where it's been propagating, I understand the mechanisms 
uh, and I understand the system that's already cancerously installed in our, that they call that infrastructure in our system. What I speak to behind the woodshed is for those that care to get back their republic and get back their rights and give them a, at least some initiating paths to start to do that again because we're about done. No one seems to have a clue. We've turned into homo entertainus, and that's leading to a subspecies that I can see as homo ignoramus. And that's not going to keep the republic. So appreciate the comment. Please listen to my broadcast. Understand, I'm not talking about the news for the sake of identifying the criminals. I know they're there. We know they're there. What we're looking at is having to deal with is the effect of the fact that they're there. And Behind the Woodshed is a place where you would step up in your responsibility, your, really your obligation, to stop trespass against you. Stop a trespass of someone who is supposed to be in coming up in the world that's supposed to pay attention and didn't, and namely this government that was established by people to keep the peace amongst them, and then you find nothing but chaos, is was for us to stop. And it appears to me that there's not any knowledge about how to do that. And so anybody that, again, when I talk to people and we start working through, we see how far off the mark everybody is. We see that the black and white sits right there to help guide us through the black and white to stop the nonsense and not many people will step up. While I do agree with one, at least one observation that David Icke made on one broadcast, looking at an interview with someone else, he fell way, way short and I identified that. And where he fell short was to stop, not bring you response, answers and remedies, which you might consider to, to attempt, depending on all your skill set. The failure to understand those remedies is an indication of how bad we are dealing with this and how bad it's going to come against us when we can't deal with it. I mean, come up a lot of euphemistic discussions. You have to have a word in your mouth. You've got to do the remedies. You've got to do whatever you've got to, you've got to write your letter. The point is, is you're not responsive. Listening to more information is not going to help us. We have enough information. We have enough information that there isn't any information. And the important point about that statement is when there is no test and they needed to test those officials to underpin and support their orders, they're all unlawful. I don't need to know a whole lot more myself. Now, there's going to be the detractors. You may have to go answer to all that. But the focus is on us not getting lost in all that noise and focus on who the assailants are. And that's what we do behind the woodshed. I don't just talk about who they might be. I don't give them labels. They're irrelevant to me. And so while I appreciate the, the comment, we be careful to not reduce what I'm trying to do, which is not to go look at someone else to tell me what the world is like. It's to be able to critically understand what I see as a witness to the crime against me and stopping it immediately. And here behind the woodshed, I try to offer the tools that anyone could use and expand from there. There's a whole lot of things. In fact, the email last night showed an old book it's kind of where I, the old books is where I learned a lot of what I understand to, to be the, the case. It's not cluttered in, in some regard. It speaks a little different, different type of languaging, but it's a little easier to understand. That all these remedies sit there to use, none of which is known by anybody today. And I'm saying that that's a, reflect on that for yourself. If you don't know or are not willing to step up, but even do the most basic forms of remedy, then you're really just, I get, what, can I, what more can I say than say you're just being the hypocrite? You have no standing at all to no place to be talking about being free or aspiring to it or expecting it or, or any of that. And the people that are against us, they rely on you not doing being that way. This is way past apathy because it's, it means your life. It means the freedom. You may pigeonhole yourself into a life that you, you constrain yourself to, then that's okay. But that works only until they come knocking at your door. And I've been trying to kind of keep people away from that happening to them by sending out, if you will, even the letter, laying out, laying out the condition of this, uh, this fraud that they put underneath the title called COVID, where there is no science, there is no test. There is no mode of transmission, and yet they throw on you all these remedies which you complain is being people control. You won't write a letter basically to out, to out the official doing that and show that. I don't know about most of y'all, all of y'all that won't do it. I don't know about you. And have a complaint? I don't know. So I don't want to get too lost in all this. 
this that part. We either respond or we or we don't and don't, shouldn't be really doing much more. We shouldn't talk. We shouldn't offer anything. We shouldn't have a complaint. We just become more of that noise. That uh, moving into some of the noise, but some of the thing that's important, the dastardly deeds in the world that are still ongoing, notwithstanding all this fraud under the label of COVID. I'm going to go through a couple of points of just bringing up some old news today. It comes back around, and we just to remind ourselves it's there. My focus on this is that when back in 20, 2005, doing a documentary about child abuse, I realized the whole system was set up to commit it. And then uh, someone like this guy Epstein, he comes along and he shows us how, how tall it is. What a bit, what big, how big an order it is, and how controlling it could be in the, in the world, and so it becomes, it continues to stay relevant in that regard. But that's not going away either. That cancer, that sickness, is not going to go away. It's certainly not if no one's really going to focus on it more than just to pass links around about the the report. But here's an interesting little observation. I thought, I wonder what's going on behind the scenes, and only from a for a touchstone here. Suspect who shot family of judge on uh, Jeffrey Epstein case uh, found dead after apparent suicide was a title that some uh, some guy, apparently some attorney, and we don't really know who actually may have been working with a, he may have been a hit man, he may have been working with a the Deutsche Bank and whatever, uh, goes and kills the family of a judge that was doing a re- search in, in on this condition with Epstein's uh, uh, was involved. The title here says the Apparent suicide of that guy. What, the guy was found after the dastardly deed in a car shot. To my mind, that looked more like a guy who got paid for not doing the job right. The point is, is that a guy, a guy got paid and someone didn't like that, and so he he was done because he's such a long-standing problem here. He had to, apparently what we're told is lots of people to hit. No. I don't get lost in all that. I want to say this RT report says it was an apparent suicide. Then you go to the bottom of the story, which is where it got kind of interesting for me. For all the science that was settled around Epstein, they say this. Epstein's own apparent suicide in a Manhattan jail was raised in a number of questions from how the multiple cameras of the tier were, were, uh, he was, where he was housed managed to malfunction simultaneously to how jail guards happened to fall asleep during the time he was said to have he was said to have hanged himself with a bed sheet in his cell. So here not even RT now agrees the science is settled on on whether or not he commits suicide. Epstein didn't kill himself. It's only apparent right now. Just as another supposed victim in, in this whole thing, this hitman gets a, apparently suicide you know, su- he's apparently involved in a suicide. There's nothing certain in this whole thing. And so, to me, that's a little interesting ongoing condition regarding all these people and how they do it and how they, they slide, the slide of hand that goes on relative to all this. Now, for me, I don't get lost in all that. That's an ongoing thing. Whatever these stories are doing, we know they, they caught Ms. Ms. Maxwell. We don't know what's going to happen with all that. And so, a lot I found it interesting, these stories start popping up. What are they finding out that all of a sudden it's not settled, and always an apparent condition. Like presumptive COVID, isn't it? Another uh, interesting uh, condition here, and showing us, again, we keep putting up with this and don't don't respond. I said on this issue, the people with the Second Amendment right should have rallied quickly around this. I don't even really know the story. I do know some of the legalities behind use of force uh, determinations, and so you have to do certain things. I talked about this story. Now we find the skullduggery inside the system, again, that we've allowed to sit there. Uh, St. Louis prosecutor's office busted altering evidence. uh, The prosecutor's office reassembled a non-operable McCloskey pistol pistol to classify as lethal. The pistol Patricia McCloskey waved at protesters who broke down a gate to trespass on their private property was a non-operable prop used during a lawsuit they were involved in, so a member of the circuit, a circuit attorney, Kim Cardner's staff, ordered the crime lab to disassemble and reassemble the gun, allowing them to classify it as a capable of lethal use in charging documents filed Monday. 
And so we see just the ongoing criminality, wherever there's an attorney, a bar association member involved, we're going to see whether they think they can get away with it or not. We're going to see crime and skullduggery, uh, despicable actions, and we as a populace are silent to it. Again, I don't want to get too lost in the story. You got the link if you want to see more. Uh, this is what goes on behind the scenes. This is, if, this is why people who want to get into courts, you'll see a lot of uh, pleading, pleading guilty, Plead, plead deals is that there's just the system is not just and we're being quiet to that one of the paths I've suggested to offer and offered is everybody who ever gets involved with these start learning your 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 remedies to collaterally attack this you just don't let them do what they will with you this is where I could identify quickly this habeas corpus remedy that you have and again, I just can't believe how many people will start reading this and start to understand it. They start to get the idea, well, these really are sitting there. They really are a record to make. They really do have these powers. And I don't know at the next point, do you, do you then go ahead and offer yourself that protection? Even in the face of, of corruption like this. So this is another attorney, just a corrupt as can be, in a system that enjoys a 92 to... So 96% conviction rate, and everybody's okay with that. So you got an op- You want to do a gun? They're going to make every opportunity to make it look like they can fit it into your charges against you because you don't have that right. You have the right to defend yourself against using it, and you better think of it that way. The occupying force doesn't want you to have that, and they can't get rid of it, so they're going to give you every pain and suffering every civil right, exaction of every kind for exercising that right. Until we get as a populace, we'll stand up against it so that it doesn't happen no more. They're going to continue to do this nonsense. Now, I'm going to move back into now the, the note of the day, the corruption, the fraud, the despicable fraud that's on upon us. The worst thing I told you, the worst thing that society could be facing would be a medical prerogative of the government against you, an emergency, which you didn't told you in, in the end of December, beginning of January, was, was on the horizon. They were going to bring on and continue 9-11. What they started in 9-11, they were going to continue, if not finish for us, in hindsight, were we going to be able to see it? I think I've been per, shown to be pretty accurate on that. But uh, here, I want to point out something here more to the point of not just again to say, well, here's some more information and studying. I want to show the the transmission, the translation that's been going on. Remember, they said that there was a presumed cause SARS-CoV-2. Now you hear about a coronavirus vaccine. SARS-CoV-2 is just being just eliminated from the picture. It's not even on the on the radar. And this is again part of why you make the record to make sure it stays on the radar and that there is no test, so they can't do what they're going to do to you. And you, you're just accepting. I don't know why you're all doing that, but that's okay. So I found a story here to identify that is the case. And looking at the fact that there's likely can't be a vaccine. So when they come out with a vaccine, it's going to be a crime against you, whether or not you want to just complain about it or do something with it, I don't know. But it can't happen. There can't be a vaccine. They're going to make one anyway. So it can't be for what they're saying. One of the ways to, to stop that is to identify what they were supposed to do and how they was impossible to do before. And I noticed that the press is now that they have the, they're working hard. They put the re- world's resources to solve what they couldn't do from when. What they couldn't do from the sur- first SARS-CoV-1. They claim that came and went and disappeared. That's what this one did, but no one wants to pay attention. They're admitting to you what happens and what will happen. But I wanted to focus you a little bit here today. The fact that they're on these so supposed uh, SARS-CoV coronaviruses, there's no vaccines. And I don't know why we would expect to see one now, but I guess that's what everyone is, what, the polypanics of it all has you feared that you're going to agree to. And those of you that won't will just complain that you're not going to get that vaccine, and they're taking up steps right now to go ahead and you may not want to get that vaccine. They're going to put you in a place. They're going to lock you down. They're going to have you control more control of your life until you do, because none of you will have the right and proper word in your mouth on how to challenge these felons. 
But there was no SAR vaccine for SARS or MERS. Would there be one for the new coronavirus? It was a, a story I found just to touch base. This was written back in February. You can read all of it. I'm not going to read too much about it all. You can read about how the, there's no no uh, coronavirus and, uh, excuse me, that there's no vaccines. Why? The excuses they're making. They're trying to set up the pre- the proposition that they might, but they'll listen. The final statement is they don't don't have a clue how this thing really works, and it's very difficult, and it should take, at least then, should take 10 years. And this is when they made the thing up, and this is when they said they claimed to have made it up in the labs. And there's very particular ways that they have to go about doing this if they wanted to be legitimate, none of which is happening, which means that it's evidence, at least plausible evidence, that they don't aren't going where they're going. So I'm saying this not to say, oh, look, there's no vaccine, there haven't been, and you get to know that. You have to put this in context of someone that comes against you that's going to say that they have something for you and that's the right thing, and you have to have a list then of things that is makes that impossible for them and gives you a place to stand so that you don't just defy. You're denying with a reason, and the reason is fraud, and you show how. So here's one, another tab you can get if you're interested. Some of this stuff, I'll tell you, I've been having a lot of trouble coming up with things to speak about. If I can't get most people just to write a letter in defense of themselves, what am I more to say? If I'm here to explain pathways of remedy and no one wants to listen to them, what more do I have to say? What more can I say that I spend more of my time here? I'm having more and more trouble relative to this. The problem is this is such a big problem. This is such a a despicable thing. It's the only word in my mind this morning, despicable, that I just can't just stop being the witness to it and the some offerings of what people can do to defend themselves. Uh, let me move on now to the fact that they don't understand what they're dealing with. There wasn't any vaccines then on SARS-CoV-1. There wasn't anything on MERS. These were supposed to be deadly, deadly things. And I told you to watch out that needle. There might be something in the world that does do stuff, and if we don't get that identified right, people die, and they die without knowing. It hits them like a like a from it hits them broadside. Uh, I don't want none of any of you to be hit broadside, uh, and that's partly another reason why I talk about these things. It's not that I may know so much. It's that there, there's some things out there that told us there's a warning here, and we better pay attention. Why? Because that's the stalking horse. That if we focus on that, we will be shot from behind from a, somebody from behind that. There's something else back there. Not to be all fearful, I think the more we have an objective basis to look and we can discern, we can identify what that is, and then what do we do? We take the things that we that we can defend ourselves with that are more substantial. Like, in, in, I've been saying this since the beginning of discussing this medical stuff, get your nutrition up, get your immune system up and function. Reg, it's, it's not about just having a strong immune system. It's that it, m- it modulates itself. That's what's killing people. It's an over an unmodulated system that's going after an infection of some sort. That's what's killing people. You want a a system that modulates itself as it just takes out what it's wanting to do. So there's nutritional bases to do that. There's enough knowledge to give us the bases for it. I have been just... Just from the sake of wanting to making sure that my information to you all has been good, looking over what has come since months and months has been... I've been consistent with that. So I've been feeling good the entire time so far to offer what I have, notwithstanding I'm not the expert in the field. There's just certain realities. You have some basic instincts about it. You have basic knowledge you can pick up. That's how you respond to this. Okay, so that you have to take this on response. But if you're being lied to and you don't know which direction to look when you're standing on the tracks, you didn't realize that you're standing on the tracks and you're looking in the wrong direction, you may get hit by the next train through going to town. And I don't want that to happen to you. But here, let's look at something here. Even though I've been saying there is no test, and there is no test, but even though I've been saying and relying on that, and I've been, and there's also the idea that the CDC owns the test and owns the technology, and yet the patent office denied that to them, and so now there's they're like the gang, uh, the the mafioso in the world to keep people from making those uh, making those into the world, even if they were good. Uh, th- this little story came along. It's just a recent story. There seems to be a lot of people want to diminish even studies that were done just a few months ago now because they've got to justify their agenda or their their cognitive dissonance or whatever word you want to say, that the the fraud they've told themselves, the prejudice they put themselves in, they want to justify that. So here's something that came out. I was just looking around. I want to do an, I did another check 
are these tests that they tell us, these antibody antigen tests, these PCR condi- uh, tools that they use, are the, is what I've been saying still valid about them? Well, in a short statement, yes, absolutely. Then I found this just came out here, just uh, this little report, maybe within the month. I don't remember the time. I want to roll down. It's uh, this, the title of it is uh, now listen carefully because what you have to understand is all the so-called tests come by different names and they try to tell you there's something better. It's new, improved. It ends up being all the same. I've explained all this before, but the title of this is antigen, PCR, and antibody. All you need to know about the various COVID-19 tests. Okay? So let's go back. Antigen, PCR, and antibody. Let's look at that. Antigen is the latest, if I understand this, it's that lateral flow test. It's like the pregnancy test. It's the pregnancy test adapted to this. It's a foreign body being checked in your body for a woman. They're applying this to this thing. An antigen test is a very quick test, and it just shows you that you have an antigen in your body in something that they consider to be the virus, right? The virus. Now, I said there's no test for the virus, so right away we know that that statement's fraud. And I'm not saying it. This was in the documentation. Let's look at PCR. The PCR, whether now it's Q, they've added Q, interestingly, Q. Uh, They've added, they had RT-PCR, talked about this. This is just a a research lab tool for multiplying what they think is is, um, an an antibody, uh, excuse me, a genome that reflects a hybrid uh, reflection of what they think is responding to an environmental insult, which the instructions tell you cannot tell you the virus. It can only tell you that there's been an insult. That's a multi PCR is a multiplication tool in the in a research lab. It's never was never made to put into clinical use. Uh, the antibody test, that's that serology test. They take blood and they check for certain antibodies, similarly using the PCR, and you have the same out, outcome. What that tells us though is the antibodies they look at there are for the past. Then I run across this story that says antibody, PCR, and anti, uh, antigen, PCR, and antibody, all you need to know about the COVID. COVID, remember, is just a bunch of symptoms. And so I can tell you right from the top of that, that's only going to talk to the fact that you have immune response to an insult, an environmental insult to your body coming from wherever, and it doesn't mean anything relative to the symptoms because you have flu-like symptoms for all kinds of things that your body's responding to. I want to not get uh, with that setup now I want to go right to the document. He will tell you this guy will tell you that the tests that they do are for particular tests uh, that they only look at one thing. And then he made a very interesting disclosure. And what I want to point out here is where I'm saying there is no test. There's no test relative to what they're promoting. This doctor says they have a test, but it's in a different place. And so I want to propose to you the fact when you, I'll just read this a little bit. You go get this idea. If you're interested in in doing this to be able to oppose someone who's imposing things to you, when you show them, see, when you say that there is no test and they didn't, and the law required that you certify to the infectious agent and the mode to make it infectious, so you know what to do against it. When there's a law, a due process, an obligation to do that, that's what you have to tie. That's what the habeas has to tie to is an obligation that the official has to do this and failed. When you, when you know that the American view is that there is no test and they won't have one, they couldn't have certified, they've failed, you have in your back pocket the fact there could have been a test that they failed to use. You don't tell them all this. You just realize you're waiting for a response. You need some place to go. When they respond, you say, well, if, if it comes up that you need to, then you say, maybe, maybe, you have to do more research on this. But this is what one doctor says. There's an additional thing that they've been looking at. And now I wonder, why wasn't this part of the test? We would still have to analyze whether or not it actually does what it says, but why isn't this part of the vernacular relative to there is no test? And why are they sticking on the same PCR fraud? in order to promote this, unless, maybe, when you look for the specific thing that they know to look for in the body responding to a specific thing, given it does what he says here, they would find that it isn't in the bloodstream. And so they're not going to bring it up. It's no different than Fukuzilla 
and the monitoring by the EPA and shutting down all the radiation monitors. They realized when you started looking at all the radiation on your land, you'd be, you'd be inundated with radiation because there's radiation everywhere domestically cr created. That they were trying to blame on Fukuzilla is the same problem here. If they did a T cell, I'll read, get to, I'll just get punchline here, a T cell test, they would probably test everybody and find it doesn't exist. And so they're not going to bring that out. But let me read this and see what we've been talking about. Why do I say this? Oh, we got so knowledgeable? No, you're holding something back here that says they could have had a test when they failed to use that test. Instead, they did a failed promotion, which they had no lawful right to do, and they've inflicted harm on the population because in their measures, which were arbitrary and capricious without an infectious agent and the mode, and we know that was harmful because of what you see, the destruction of the society that you see, when all they had to do, given, now, parenthetically, we researched to see this, te this new test, this test they've been using here in the, just recently, would actually give us a better indication of what it was. They didn't do that. And when they didn't do that, that's another failure, fiduciary breach. Now, that's qualifying. I haven't even had time to go research whether this, this is true, what it does. What they do say here is they're looking in another place, another country. They look at something else. And if I just give that to them and say, well, there's the test. We want to know why the officials in this country, United States, or anybody else in, in rule of law, democracy nations, uh, Western nations, if you will, why they haven't used this to at least identify. And I think I already have the answer and I've already given it to you. But let me read this here. The antigen, PCR, and antibody, all you need to know about the various tests. Dr. John says antibody tests are carried out mainly for sero surveillance to identify the spread in the community. I'm dropping way off in the bottom of this article. Sero surveillance is typically, that's that blood test. So he's talking only the antibody, um, the antibody test, yes, is done by, well, here it says, zero surveillance is done by antibody testing, and if a person has the I lowercase g, uppercase g antibody, it indicates that he or she has recovered. Now, this is the herd immunity thing, apparently. Okay, so listen very carefully on what we could know if they were being honest about this, and whether or not you would want, why you'd even want to do a test, or even if it's sufficient to even understand being imposed like you have in quarantine, being imposed for so-called social, any measure, masks that are going to kill you, masks that won't do you a darn thing, but they, they feed into your your belief structure that you're doing okay. They're, they're a fear mitigation tool for those of you susceptible. But ser serial surveillance is done by antibody testing, and if a person has an IgG, I lowercase g, uppercase g antibody, it indicates that he or she has recovered. This helps in identifying the spread and immunity, and also in selecting candidates for plasma donation. There are some challenges with antibody kits as well. Quote, a commercial antibody kit only detects IgM or IgG antibodies produced by the B cells, but it does not detect antibodies produced by the T lymphocyte cells. The latter, the T lymphocyte cells, is long-lasting, says Dr. Subramanian Swami Nathan, infectious disease specialist at Glen Eagles Global Health City. And if I'm looking at New India Express for my website, so you know I'm coming from that part of the country, the country being the world here. T cells produced in the thymus gland are part of the immune system response against viral infection. The cells directly target and kill infected cells. A recent Singapore study published in Nature has found that subjects who covered, recovered, recovered from COVID-19, remember just symptoms of the flu, had SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells. The study also examined uninfected individuals and found that the presence of SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells in more than 50% of them, concluding that it could be due to cross immunity from other coronaviruses. Dr. Swaminathan said that as a commercial kits do not detect T cell antibodies, if a person tests negative, it does not mean he is not immune from the virus. 
Those with mild infections may test negative, but they could still be immune, as they may have T-cell antibodies. I'll stop here. You can read more. I want, again, I'm not talking about being knowledgeable. Well, you need to be knowledgeable about this. It frames how your foundation. I'm saying you use this to go and produce a document, a challenge to anybody. I don't say use this in the front. You use this as a, as a second step back. Because you've got to give them a place to answer, and then you've got to come up with something else, I'm sure, in this deception. It's a deep deception. But where do you see this doctor saying that there's a T cell? You can see T cells. Which identify immunity. And if they're looking for the fact of what they're doing, they'd be looking at this, why aren't they? But they can't because they don't have the test about SARS-CoV-2. Let me go back up. Re, when you read this, understand they found the presence of SARS-CoV-2 specific. I don't even know how they would have done that. But they did. Let's give that too much to them. But you know what it's it missing right here? They didn't tell you how, whether or not there was a mode of transmission that would use it to be causative of the infectious a disease they're claiming COVID is. And this is why I said earlier, you have the infectious agent that must be certified to, in fact, I did this in a, in a Twitter, you also have to have the mode for action to be taken against it. You're speaking to the obligations and duties of an official to identify what they're after to stop. We're talking emergencies and disaster here now. This is why the level is so critical to understand. That has to come up with something, some measure that's going to stop the spread and nothing else. We've heard that in the Ohio case. If it goes outside that ability, it's beyond their, their jurisdiction, their authority. And in habeas, you have, you're speaking to jurisdiction. For those of you listening to me there, that's why I, I talk the way I do relative to these certain challenges. You're destroying, ultimately, you don't say it, you just do it. You're destroying their authority, their jurisdiction to have a say. I've been saying this forever. Don't argue with anybody. Just show how they didn't have authority in the beginning. And you just be quiet on that, settled in that. Your, your, peace, your peace is in there. But here, understand, they're even talking SARS-CoV-2 specific. The thing that you're not hearing about anymore with these vaccines, or we're going to have a coronavirus, a common cold vaccine. You know, that's impossible generally. There's probably over 150 or more different causes to the common cold. Remember, all the other style of viruses beyond corona sit there to cause you to be sniffly, fevery, stuffy head medicine type stuff. So I want to point out, read here, this is a very important awareness. If I give them the idea that we can allow the T-cell to test that there's been an immunity to SARS-CoV-2, then why wasn't this test done to check the immunity so that we aren't set in a constant fear mode? And if they have the SARS-CoV-2 identified, why aren't they using it as the test to at least identify it's there, and then they could work on the transmission mode? You heard me last week, and for I mean, I've been talking about this for a long time. To the transmission mode, they have no clue. Then what are the point then being under a, a due process standard of mitigation to stop the spread? How is anything you're coming up with not arbitrary and capricious? And in particular, where it causes the harm that it does is your point. So study has also confirmed uninfected individuals found a presence of SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells is saying they're immune. Why don't we hear about that? Not as a test. That's really an obs observation, isn't it? I guess you could test for that, but it's not. It's really more of an observation uh, inside what your blood is doing, what your body's doing. And they answer here to the asymptomatic position as well. But you realize half the half the people that were looked at had this. They weren't infecting. No, you're watching people who may actually have the answer on how you I identify the immune system, how it's actually functioning. If I just hand them the T cell occurrence to be the definitive test that there was a SARS-CoV-2, again, was, and I just don't look at the causative part of it, then what they tell us is that this stuff has been in the, in the, in the population for a long time as well. Let me go back to the point. It can't be novel then. And if they turn it to no, go from SARS-CoV-2 to coronavirus, it's not novel. There is no authority to put anything on you relative to quarantine, any measure, quarantine, any distancing, masks, any anything, anything. And that's what we've lost the focus. For those of you that want to focus in on this part and 
try to say something to protect to start this yourself, start to make a record, you're going to focus in on the ex- the expansion of this from a specific thing, even if we handed them this presumption that it existed, to something that's generic. And when they didn't certify to the specific, they then expanded beyond into something that was not and could not be pandemic. And that's another way you prove, even under the WHO's designation as pandemic, when they went to coronavirus and didn't identify specifically the SARS variant, if that's a case, they've act, they've admitted they are outside their authority. And so, I'm, again, I'm not speaking on the, just the knowledge that this gives you. I'm saying this is what you, in a, off the top of my brain, utility in protecting yourself. Not just that the lizard people made this for you and want to make you lesser than lizard people. No, this is, I don't care who did this. There was due process in the nation, the United States of America, and I see it's in other places too, though I don't do the study in it. It's there, and no one insisted on it to keep yourself protected from whomever is out there to harm you, which is really to, to my dismay. But anyway. I get lost quickly over there, and I wonder, what the heck am I doing? But So this is a very important study. It just came out. They're explaining something, folks. And I want you to see that there's a, there is apparently a way to see the thymus cell creation, which is the immune system working to take out this thing. And why aren't you being told about that if they're actually interested in trying to find the spread and stop at some point? That they don't only... It tells me they're attempting to continue the fraud that is evidenced by the failure to certify an infectious agent, not a title called COVID, but an infectious agent and its mode of transmission. Okay, so I guess I'll stop there and move on, get to the masks again. More evidence. Apparently it came out as a question. I think this is the story that came through. I'm giving you a website link, but it actually came through Ben Swan, I think his name is. He apparently got it said the same, the similar things as I did. I don't even know now if this is something that uh, information I've already given you, but it came out someone attacked him for saying the very same thing that I've been telling you about these masks. And they, one challenge was that they were old studies. This is where you start seeing somebody start shifting the goalpost uh, on you. And if if you see some past studies and new studies, and people want to say the new studies are better, not necessarily when you're trying to when there's a cat box cover cover up going up, and they're trying to cover up the problem and the fraud and the stinky thing. You got to be keep track of that. Well, he answers to this uh, assertion that the test he relied on in a previous uh, video to expose the same thing I've been telling you for months and months uh, was uh, too old. Well, he brings up a newer one, and you know, I give you a link for that so you see a website that's referring to it. That the new CDC and the HWO, the WHO, not the Rock Group or the OWL, but the World Health Organization study proves quote no evidence face masks uh, prevent virus. Well. Again, just critically looking, how can they even know if they haven't identified the virus? And there is no test. And notice, too, if they do the T-cell check, they're only looking in the past and that you're you're immune. Well, they certainly don't want that, the Prince's cruise ship example, Petri dish example, to prove out that 83% of the people were had the thing and their body, everybody's body handled it fine. Didn't pass it on what little bit. But at any rate, Another link, substantiating again, the remedy that they're trying to force on you is not just no, no evidence that it doesn't prevent the virus. That could harm you. I'm saying it this way because the obligation is to stop the spread and to offer mitigation strategies that work to do that, not to create outcomes that are not relevant to stopping it. And you can stop every one of those orders. You can, every bit of the parts that are even in excess, that would be more like what you've been hearing in the injunction cases coming down, were within the rule, but your rule now imposes, is imposing beyond its limits. We're within that. So again, I'm not talking about who's doing it to you. I don't care. It's That it's being done to you is important, and there's checks and balances for you to in, invoke to stop it. And when you don't, they say that's their, they just take it as their license to continue to harm you. Now, I brought up another, I think this might be an older article from the broadcast here, Universal Masking in Hospitals uh, in a COVID-19 Era. 
Well, it wasn't supposed to be an era. See, that means that they're planning to be permanent. Okay? So, we take our cues. I want to point out here that SARS-CoV-2 pandemic continues to explode was a story that was written back a few, back April 1st. That's April Fool's Day, folks. I think I've, this is one of the stories I brought up. It's, just, it's a joke what they're doing. I wanted to focus you on the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic continues to explode statement because that focuses us back on, it's not coronavirus, it's something specific. That This other story says that we can actually see T cells for. None of which you're hearing in the states while they lock you down. Which I believe is because if they actually went to the things that told you information, they couldn't lock you down. They couldn't continue the, to despoil your, your country, can despoil your lives, despoil your livelihoods, your future. It's certainly within the realm of the Agenda 21, as I've told you. So there is knowledge that in the past, don't lose the fact that they were focused on SARS-CoV-2. They're not now. What they want to do now is make a vaccine for all coronavirus or the common cold, which appears to be, in actual science, an impossibility. Remember, even SARS-CoV-2 being identified and named, there was never a proof of its transmission mode or its scientific existence to cause, even if they had a transmission mode, it, to, there's another step. Three steps here they're missing that you've been, you haven't been talking to. Uh, that it causes and can cause what they're talking about. And so another link, again, this is just the fact that this, there's evidence out there that any of you that want to can write a very concise letter to out the fraud. It doesn't take a lot of explanation. You can refer to people who are authoritative in their eye, in the officials' eyes, experts say. You can research all that. It's all consistent. And then you bring the, you bring underneath it, you bring the statutes that required them to do this. And you play the first part, which they didn't. And you say, and if you're interested in stopping it, you would have done this and you didn't do that. That's another fraud. That's that fraud of omission. And then you point on the fact that it's doing nothing but harm. Now, you, in a habeas, it's private to you. This is not for everybody. Private to you. This is why I find this so powerful. Each one of you has the power to do this, and you won't. I don't know why, but you won't. And so, they've moved from SARS-CoV-2 to coronavirus is an expansion, an unlawful expansion. And if you come at this from the required identification of a certified infectious agent, you'll be able to nail them there on that once you identify that the requirement to certify to the infectious agent in, in the mode what they would be addressing when they made their measures, you'd, you'd identify how this is a fraud. Pretty simple. Again, I don't know what, I'm going to keep some reason in my mind, keep saying, I am not telling you the news. I'm suggesting the notice is out there for how you're going to deal with what is harming you today. There is really no excuse. Moving on to the story that was, or the, excuse me, the study. And it could be a story, yeah. All this is a story at one level because it's a fraud that we're even dealing with this is the fraud. And so there's that, that layer of problem as well. But I think this is the study that was done, referred to by Ben Swan, the newer discussion, non-pharmaceutical measures for pandemic influenza in non-healthcare settings, personal protective and environmental measures. Long read, but you go through, and I'm just going to read the highlight that came to me to tell you in the broadcast in short terms. Essentially, this whole study shows you this this statement here in a couple paragraphs relative to this, I want to point you out here. Remember, it says influenza. That's the flu. Remember, we were in the worst influenza season in a decade. We found that back in November. I reported on it, and that was worse than the year before. So we've been on a string of bad influenza years. Your body, I mean, the, everyone's 300 million people of which would respond differently to it. Naturally, without any without any nefarious manipulations at all, and this is a study that just came out. Let me just get to the cut to the chase for the broadcast, so you can see. You'll find this in here. You use these things in order to show the measures not only are arbitrary, capricious, they're harmful. They do everything negative to what they should have done. And so, what you're also saying is, even if you have, if you, even if you did certify or to an infectious agent. Nothing you've done would work. Here's the, the gist of this article. Lots of stuff to read. Lots of citations. 
However, in our systemic review, this study of non-pharmaceutical measures for pandemic influenza, not coronavirus. Coronavirus actually is smaller, if I understand. So I don't even know how you even get there. But anyway, we'll just go with the influenza this time in non-healthcare settings. This is your personal protective environmental measures that they're forcing on you. It says, however, in our systemic review updating the findings of Wong et al., we did not find evidence of a major effect on hand hygiene on laboratory-confirmed influenza virus transmission. Nevertheless, hand hygiene might be included in influenza pandemic plans as part of a general hygiene and infection prevention. See, there's the question of transmission. They will just assert cleanliness is next to godliness. I think that's proper. I've suggested it myself. When you don't know, you do everything you can to protect yourself. That is one known way. Whether or not relevant to influenza is still up for grabs. But they do suggest it nonetheless because they don't know about transmission. So I say it's just not even enough to identify even, even the infectious agent. It's how does it go from person to person? Where, where is that cook postulate, right, Walrus? Uh, we did not find evidence that surgical face, surgical type face masks are effective in reducing laboratory confirmed influenza transmission, either when worn by infected persons, source control, or by persons in the general community to reduce their susceptibility. However, as with hand hygiene, face masks might be able to reduce the transmission of other infections and therefore have value in an influenza pandemic when healthcare resources are stretched. Well, other infections, those other things that will trigger a, a PCR alarm. Yeah? Another one, the antibody alarm. It is essential to note that the mechanisms of person-to-person transmission, transmission in the community have not been fully determined. I'll end there. There's a ton of stuff in here you could pull out, short sentences you put in when you're in, make your case and then challenge the measures. It says that would, it would follow, wouldn't it? If I haven't identified and certified to an infectious agent, how can I know the transmission mode? And if I can't know the transmission mode, how can I determine whether or not the measures I install would stop or slow mitigate the spread? All that is answered if they would have just done the due process is the point. And so I'll stop here. You can read more. This stuff is rich in how to take out the adversary taking you out. It's not just a new notice to you, oh, it doesn't work. No, there's an application to it doesn't work. There's a foundation to it doesn't work. It begins with there is no test. The test was required. Why? Not because of the sake of the test. It's because they had to certify to an infectious agent. Where am I getting that? Do I make that stuff up? No. You go to your state statute. There's a requirement to do this on your public health laws. I've now seen it in a number of states as you bring me your stuff to have me look at what you're doing, and I'm getting that insight. And why wouldn't we expect that anyway, even if it's not written? You can still move this forward even if it's not. Why are they doing They have to substantiate what they're doing, especially the level of the fundamental inf- in infringements that are going on. And despite all this, and we see this interesting little truth pop out. It's good for them, good enough for you, but not for them. And they'll exempt themselves from it. D.C. exempts lawmakers, government employees from new mask order in Washington, D.C. If you don't think this is a bigger joke, then uh, really, the masks demean a darn thing. If you think those vipers and criminals and adenocriminals and creatures in Washington, D.C. are more clean than you, maybe you need to go wash your hands again. I don't know. D.C. exempts lawmakers and government employees from new mask order. Why? How can they do that? What was the reason for to mistreat, the, not treat the population equally? And you see the inversion of the authority in this. And understand, this is the mayor, the mayor of the city of Washington D.C. Be careful. There's even another jurisdiction inside that actually Congress controls, but she's in charge of. This minor pipsqueak makes this determination. And I already know, but all I've told you, I already know that she has no basis for what she's done, even to exempt them, but. 
why just exempt them? Everybody has now been mistreated because she has no basis to impose the first part. But she exempts the lawmakers and government employees because they must be the pure, clean, pristine elite. The order mandates the wearing of masks for all indoor and outdoor settings where social distancing cannot be observed. Uh, no other designation, designated profession is exempt from wearing a mask except when a piece of work equipment would re- preclude the mask use. Consequences of ignoring the order includes fines of up to $1,000. So you can make your excuses to go outside, oh, I mean to wear the mask and I don't want to make a fight, but you can do this by letter and you can establish the crime that this is all is, as I explain it, uh, but uh, here, they, they can exempt some and not others. This is the insanity behind it all. And yet there's no science at all to identify what the thing is or its transmission mode to understand that a, wearing a mask would happen even if they you know, even if they did protect, which they don't. Even, even if the mask did protect you, they don't even know that this would stop the transmission of it. There's no absolutely zero knowledge about that. And the best they can say, it's inadequate. Well, that isn't certainty. And anyway, so this is the stupidity that people accept in the seat of the federal power that that also is the seat of deception that's forcing itself upon you and utilizing this as cover. And then we see the fomentation of another, what, the other, another spring is being sprung on us through, through this uh, fomenting of the city, being fighting in the cities. Another another f- uh, created fiasco that won't that has no no mitigation to because it doesn't exist. It's a fairy tale. They can they can uh, again put the ring in your nose. You can believe it. You can uh, wear your mask where you have instead of send a better letter and conf- and get these guys on record for being uh, committing the crimes that they have been. Make your excuses for not doing that and continue to be e- exampling the very same control that you you. Uh, you talk about. I, I don't get that part. But at any rate, we, we are being also pressed at the same time. Again, I told you what, what they didn't get completed in 9-11, they're going to do. They're, they're working it out. We see now the federal coup to the over, overthrow the, of the states and the Knicks, the Tenth Amendment, is underway. Finally, uh, moving on here from the first fia- f- first fraud into another one, which is now having the rubber meet the road in your locale. You have minions out there putting all these false orders in. Now we're going to have the physicality happen where now uh, John Whitehead finally, finally says it in his report. uh, We're under martial law this way. He's claiming that it's nixing the Tenth Amendment. Uh, I don't even think, well, it doesn't, the Tenth Amendment exists, but it exists in a certain application. I don't know why he doesn't understand that. And uh, we see that through the power of coordination and the requirement that it's there. So it's not like it's nixed. It's that you have to apply things in certain ways. I've been telling you this. When the occupier comes in, you better start working with more uh, universally objective measures. Otherwise, you'll be defeated at every turn. Or the the apparent invasion is actually being facilitated by the one being invaded to bring on what we're doing. So John finally sees it. John Whitehead finally says we're under martial law. So we're, not state, we're not in the police state no more. Uh, my hat's off to him. I really wish... He's an attorney. He's probably the fastest one into a court to start testing some of the things I've been suggesting to you. You know, we, again, there's no no correlation. We don't meet together. We don't talk together. It's this interesting um, non-social media. And uh, even in the face of an attack, we don't come together at all. Uh, so anyway, that's enough for, for John. He's finally admitted now it's martial law. And, and so good good on him. We need to now look at it. And then someone else is ta- now telling you, I tried to warn you about the federal kidnapping. Well, you're not a bunch of kids. Well, maybe you, maybe you, you, you is a bunch of kids, and maybe it is kidnapping. It's a, just an abduction that can happen to you, indefinite detention. He's now reminding you of what he, uh, Michael Marahe, when Congress in, uh, inserted provisions of the 2012 NDAA authorizing indefinite detention without due process, I called the federal kid, I called them federal kidnapping pre- provisions, and I warned, I warned the, that they would eventually be used. Well, Okay, good. Uh, that's what you've been hearing behind the woodshed. I went to crickets when you didn't respond to 2012. All right. I did what, too? I read you the murder memo of 2010 when they made that out at the same time they brought that out. So 
Here we have uh, Mike uh, Meharry uh, telling you that uh, there would be an indefinite detention on due process, and now he's pointing to the fact that the federal troops are on the streets and uh, apparently uh, taking people off the streets, and we have a proof of that coming up with a lawsuit. Uh, but uh, here, Trump, uh, so now, so I brought up the murder memo, though that's really called, uh, recognized as the torture memo. But I explained to you how the murder memo that was exposed to us presented in evidence in 2010 it led us to be known in 2012 when I went to crickets was the logic from an attorney on how they were going to diminish and they referenced the, the Libra code and then they dismissed it outright. And I said, here's your lack of law. You're done right here. There is no basis whatsoever. You better start shifting your thoughts on how you're going to address this. And you're going to be having to address it in a bunch of people that are really not capable, a society that's not capable to get this. And here we are. Mike Meharry says, hey, I told you they were going to start kidnapping people, and now we are 2020. Now they start taking people off the streets underneath this, what seems to be a fabricated condition relative to your cities. And don't underestimate this if you don't live in the city. What's going on here? This is very serious incursion, encouragements that the, the countryside will pick up soon enough. As you watch the coronavirus, the COVID-19 Republican or Democratic Party governors doing all the same thing is this thing here as well. Trump consults and said 2020, folks, they're going to come back and they're going to implement what they did at 9-11 and they're going to co find other ways to come in. Trump consults the Bush torture lawyer on how to skirt the law and rule by decree. Trump administration has been consulting the former governor, government lawyer who wrote the legal justification. Now remember, there's just an opinion that was never tested. And then what would you test it? I understand all that. All you folks that have been in the courts, you, you're always, I'm sure you're just yelling at me under your breath or maybe outright about, oh, just, I understand all that. We need to show people there's a condition here that we can out more than our opinion and it has no party. It has no side of the side of the aisle. It has no agenda. It's, it's objective. At any rate, the Trump administration has been consulting the former government lawyer who wrote the the Bar Association member who wrote the legal justification for waterboarding on, on how the president might try to rule by decree. And they threw out the even the law of war, the Libra Code. John, you told the, not me, you, told the Guardian he was talking to the White House officials about this view with a recent Supreme Court ruling on immigration would allow Trump to issue executive orders on whether to apply existing federal laws. Quote, If the court really believes what it just did, then it just handed President Trump a great deal of power to you, a professor at Berkeley Law, said. And if that's the same Berkeley that's the hub of sustainable development, oh, sh wow. Talk about, this is, you know, this is got a, this is a monstrous hub of deception and control right there at Berkeley. This is the same underlying condition that gives all, this, all, the, all the policy that, uh, to all your states as part of the infrastructure of one of the entities that's taking you out, which David Icke has no clue about. This is real stuff on the ground that you can point to right inside the code that tells you what's there this infrastructure has been working against you the entire time. The Supreme Court has said President Obama could choose not to enforce immigration laws for about 2 million cases, and why can't Trump administration do something similar with immigration, create its own program? But it could do it in areas beyond that, like health care, tax policy, criminal justice, inner city policy. I talked to them a fair amount about cities because of the disorder. But now we're pointing out, pointing to the so-called disorder. We all know that it's also fabricated. We also know that the, there's a stalking horse issue that's being used, and there's some assassins behind that that's going to take out anybody who, who tries to, to believe in all that and doesn't look at the truth. They are consulting with the same attorney, bar member, that said you had the government, a bureaucrat, has right to indefinitely detain, to detain you just because. If that doesn't prove what I told you, that 9-11 was going to be furthered, and if that doesn't tell you all about Trump, I don't know, folks. I don't know what to say. All you folks.
But I don't know if you notice he doubled down on the mass side now. I don't know who got to him or if he had to be gotten to if it was all a plan the way he did that. But in the last week and a half, he's doubled down going to the mask. He's not going to disclose the fraud. Uh, I don't know how any of you can continue to support that. It's against you. No, not this guy, you. You, yourself, the listener. And I found an article that actually has OLC torture memos declassified. It was written in 2009. Someone had found it. I think that's about the time we all saw it. That's the time... I started taking note, and by 2012, when no one responded to that, I went to crickets. It was the lack of response to something that's about to come and stomp you. And here, someone is claiming that he thinks that's the, the connection we see at 2020, hindsight, Operation Hindsight 2020, what I told you was coming. He sees himself, what he predicted out of this, I told you what I've seen out of it. And here we have 2020 back again. Hindsight, back again, here, about something that came out of the Bush-era 9-11 condition, utilizing the same bar member, to further look to see how they can take your rights. What I find interesting, is he throws out in that story that you guy, not you, but the attorney, he kind of throws it, in a way, he seemed to throw out a little bit of an incentive, that he was trying to help Trump to figure out how Trump could order open carry. So that would, I find that interesting, that would inspire people into the Second Amendment belief that that was going to be helpful. In, in fact, that whole thing is a, is a diversion. You shouldn't have to have the imposition, except for the bar members in the, in the row, the bar member attorneys in the robes have told you that you somehow you need permission because you have to go through your sheriff in order to be, somehow have the right, have permission to do that. You don't have any carry rights unless you're told to in statute. We've agreed with all that nonsense as well. And that's how they can do this one. Now, Trump, they throw out this little piece of bait. Oh, he's considering going to have you do open carry, whatever, carry at all. Why can he do that if he's, the, if he's a federal officer in the, in the District of Washington, unless all your states are exactly what the CIA fact book said, are administrative divisions of the federal government? And your firearms license is exactly what it sounds like, and not a, a keep and bear arm. And yet, so here's a little piece of bait they've flo thrown into this other story. We see the OLC torture memos declassified. I got you another link back to 2009. What we're seeing now is this: is now Trump taking the, uh, taking advantage, taking the baton that, B that Obama had, that Bush had, that they all got from Lincoln, and we were all silent to it in the continuing civil war that never ended. And now we're seeing evidence that they're willing to come and put these troops right in your in your cities. Homeland Security acting like an occupying army, says Senator Wyden after federal uh, agents shoot a peaceful protester, Portland protester. Well, I don't know if it was a peaceful protester or not. I mean, it may have been peaceful. I've seen some people doing some pretty pretty uh, un, unpeaceful things over there, but that's not the point. Well, now uh, Senator Wyden sees the occupying army. How long have you been hearing out about the hind woodshed? You know, it's not because just behind Woodshed. I said, you can research this back when Lincoln didn't leave, but occupying armies. And we've done the research, so it's not even an opinion. But but now the, the same guy that's brought this state into the state that it is, now now he doesn't like the occupying army. Sounds nothing more than the Soviet doing what the Soviet did, what they did to, to what was it, Homodor and Ukraine? They got rid of all the knowledge of the production, and they put all the peon and the head peons into into places of production. And then when the when the takeover was taken, they starved all the people down into nothing and death and sickness and everything else. And then they killed those people. Sounds like sounds like Senator Wyden here to me. He's finally seeing the the the, the thing that he's brought on, because he really wasn't a senator. And before I go too far and get too irritated. These are the folks, the thing that we sued in 2013, we told them, we told the President Trump that he didn't ask, answer, and he's doing this. It's almost seeming like a, a side answer, but he's doing it on the wrong point, that this looks like a setup to me, through Trump as well. We advance the warning of people like you inside Berkeley, inside the Sustainable Development Group, inside the infrastructure of the one of the pillars of Agenda 21 would be used to take down this country. And Trump's doing it. He's using it. 
And now Senator Rydens, who has allowed the destruction, he's now complaining himself that there's an occupying army. Now, I realize it's only to his his only constituency. It's his little homeland, him, his hometown, and all that. The point is that there, here's clearly the notice to us of hypocrisy. And no one stepped up to stop it and stop and help you. And they allow this nonsense in order to play it out in order to get the controls they need. America is staring down the barrel of a martial law. Oregon Center warns another statement. Again, now it's, now it's known that you're under martial law the way this is coming down. And my view on this becomes a little bit different in the fact of jurisdictions. In, I told you about land law, and I start looking at this. I also start looking at what we did, what I've done in my own history relative to these things as, a, as I can apply them. And I start seeing, to me, it looks like the big setup that no one's going to speak to, the setup for the takedown, as we keep believing that what's going on is actually the thing that needed to be gone on, and it isn't. And then who was supposed to be actually responding was we, the people, in different capacities. Now, so I got this kind of inside out and backwards just a little bit. Moving on to a Twitter, Vince Easley at Pondragan or Twitter uh, sent me a notice of a thing he was responding to called the zenith of caucusocracy is heard in lockstep healing, heel clicking salutes as quote America is in the middle of a kleptocracy as written by Banner David, and he sent that to me and. Uh, relative to a lawsuit that the Oregon Department of Justice had sued, where the complaining of Senator Wyden, based on this uh, federal government agents coming into town and essentially black bagging people and holding them without charge and then releasing them and all this other thing. And uh, the story from Maxine Bernstein and sending the links to documents relative to the lawsuit. And I responded after reading, after I received a before this, I'd received from Moose Girl the, the lawsuit that they'd filed from Oregon that complained to the federal court, no less, about uh, enjoining or mandating something underneath Perrin's Patrie, which I've discussed with you. My response after reading even just the first few pages of the Oregon complaint was this, that similarly from a part reading of the suit, it appears the state doesn't like competition and at least is content when the feds and state work together to do the same. Hashtag caucusocracy. What am I speaking of? When you read that complaint, they're saying that people's civil rights got violated. They're saying that people got accosted without cause, that people got uh, were harmed without due process of law, essentially. Their so-called civil rights, and they're not talking about it in the exactions of every kind, were being violated, things that you believe is your civil rights, that they were being violated by a federal gang, essentially, without identification and all this other stuff. My view on that is that Oregon is just jealous. They, The Oregon state does the very same thing. And I want to point, and I didn't say this to either, either response, but I held this back for this for today, I suppose. I want you to remember and never forget Finnicum. Lavoie Finnicum is the example where the state of Oregon was content to work with the feds to block a highway, which is a crime, and set up an ambush for someone who was found later to be completely within his civil rights, completely within his rights of intention, completely within going down the highway to go to a meeting to go talk to a sheriff, was completely within his rights and was gunned down by an Oregon, uh, Oregon trooper. The cover-up of which everyone knows and sees. It's just a hypocrisy of the state of Oregon saying, well, you didn't work with us to do all this, so we don't, we're going to sue you at the federal court. Do I need any other, any other examples? Lee Cole, the guy that dies not six months after they come after me on a bogus traffic ticket. The state of Oregon didn't care. Their troopers killing, gunning out a, a, someone who had a medical, a medical difficulty. They gunned him down by sundown. Myself, almost, I don't know how I'm, I keep telling you folks, you may not appreciate this, close calls, I don't even know how I'm here, relative to what happened to me. I was almost the first Lee Cole. The story of which you can't find, I've been looking for the Lee Cole story, I can't find it now, it's, it's been gone from the internet. If you want to talk about the, the Mandela effect, the Mandalay effect, yeah, uh, it's out there folks, they just change the internet on you. You think it's real. 
But here we go. The state of Oregon's lawsuit sounded just like a, com a whining complaint over things that the state of Oregon itself does. Our lawsuit was about that as well. This is the same attorney general, still in office, who did not respond, has defaulted the state's position to our complaint. This is this actual complaint looked like evidence of incompetence to me. And I'll stop right here before I keep going. It doesn't mean nothing to anybody who's not interested, who may be even interested. Uh, we're looking at two vipers now between the, the state and the federal court judge interacting. And the, I say that because the judge who gets the complaint, and whatever apparently they had hearings, actually makes a decision on this. His name was a Jay Mossman. I'll tell you, that guy is a criminal in a black robe. How do I know that? Seven minors were transferred up to his court into a court of non-competent jurisdiction, an eighth minor of which had his property stolen by the, by the uh, uh, FBI. And that judge, who wasn't even in the cases, and that judge looked at no law whatsoever or no remedy to find for the government. Is this guy right here. Whom nonetheless in this discussion goes through, and you need to read, you'll get the link, how the state of Oregon does not have standing to bring the type of claim it brought, even under Parent Petrie. On a face, it's pretty astounding. The sovereign state of Oregon can't sue? But look very carefully. This is the incompetence part. The, the Attorney General of Oregon did not actually state the claim they needed to state. They made up a bunch of stuff and didn't bring the evidence and they didn't advance the prosecution that they needed to. For as much as the criminal Mossman is, he identified that much. That's also a game too. I want to point yourself point you all to something though. What I noticed in the what I didn't see in the complaint, and maybe I overlooked it, again I'm reading stuff kind of quick sometimes was that you're not noticing any discussion on who owns the territory, the land over which uh, these, uh, these people are defending, called the Fed agents, and where they are when they're taking people from the streets, and whether or not the state of Oregon itself is allowing that. I may be in error, because I don't know everything all the time, but last I looked, there is no ceded territory for any federal court on lands of uh, in the territory of the state of Oregon. That means they have, by the 1956 two-volume book, Eisenhower commissioned to read what is my territorial, uh, my territorial authority, where does it extend and how, they found out where there's no ceded land, there's a coexisting authority. The, pri the federal government there is only a, a tenant, essentially. Notwithstanding its sovereign power, it doesn't have the power that, it's, that it wields where it walks out into the street with armies and starts to beat up on anybody. What I think we're noticing, and I want you to pay attention to, you don't see any designation of the land underneath and where the title and property authorities are and how that's split. You'll hear the talk in the, in the Mossman decision relative to the high bar that was supposed to be met when it goes in, the state attacks the feds, and that the Supreme Court hasn't allowed that much, and the state didn't meet the high bar. You don't see anybody talking about the territorial limits, and then you should then realize that the lawsuit was a bit premature, and maybe we're also seeing that the incompetence of the state to enforce its own laws where it wants to say it protects the citizen, it never did in the first instance to have police in the place to keep the peace when the federal agents came off of their leased land, if you will, their interest in land, and came and beat up and stole people. Maybe those of agents needed to be arrested by the local cops or sheriff for, for, not, for working off of their problem and protection of it. Maybe we're looking at a different remedy for the state if it was really sovereign and it was really protecting you all. And I'm saying maybe. You'd all have to look at this. It won't matter to you if you don't understand what I'm talking about, and it would take a little bit too long to go through all the little ins and outs about how it looks like the local sheriff should have been involved to protect you all from the the, the arrest, the black bagging, the, the, the abduction to the federal building, moving you from the public sector into the federal jurisdiction inside the building.
which is a co-jurisdiction on top of that, which means that there is no federal sovereignty at that level. The state still has jurisdiction. In other words, the sheriff has jurisdiction there. You look at the land and the title and the deeds, and this thing comes out a little bit different, that this looks like a big setup case to bring in the problem. Justify the fed federal government to be in the cities. And it's a dereliction on on the side of the state, and it's a it's it's an it's a, an encroachment on the side of the feds, handed to the feds to make the decision through one of its agents, who I know would wouldn't know the, to do the law if you gave it to him. I mean, I know that because we gave it to him, and then he let a harm befall someone who wasn't even part of the case. That's the kind of vipers you're dealing with in this case. So, to me, I really, I've spent a whole lot more time talking to you about it than I really have interest for. We're looking at a bunch of criminals that are, that are moving, trying to get favor in your mind about what's going on, and none of us will settle down and look at the underlying foundation of the law here and start to, to parse out who are the real criminals and who needs to be removed, who needs to be removed from office, and what this place is supposed to be actually doing. I do not agree that the protesters are destroying uh, the federal buildings and whoever. And it's private property. You shouldn't be doing that. That needs to be arrested. If the mayor is allowing that, they, he needs to be removed. The sheriff is allowing that. They need to be removed. I say sheriff because the city may have already abrogated itself. They need to be removed. That nobody's removing the actual on-the-ground authorities where they are derelict is our problem. That they had to hand it over to someone like Mossman is another type of problem. That no one looks at the underlying land titles to see where who has jurisdiction and who's failing and their elect is the problem of the people to allow this, and that's going to bring on the end result that we are watching, which is feared by most everybody. The marshalization of your cities, where there's no request, and someone like you, not my listeners, but attorney you, is justifying it without challenge. Justifying the, the infringements and the extensions. Moving over to more, another thing, uh, the frauds that we can buy into, the things that are set up for us to buy up, buy into, to take us down. It's nothing more than I've been telling you the process, the the dis alternative dispute resolution. You, I just see, if you have, don't appreciate that, it's easy, not easily, but if it's easy to see once you understand how that works, that Portland is one of the, all these issues are that. They offer you a pain and suffering to buy into, then they give you the remedy, which most people think is the Hegelian dialectic. That's not what it is, but anyway, that's what you believe. That's fine. If that gets you more closer to understanding what the, what the trick is, that's okay too, but that doesn't stop the trick, and it doesn't stop those that, to do the trick or to do that, continuing to do the trick, or to those in the, in the future. That was up to us to stop. And if we do it wrong, the power that can come against us is superior to us. We've got to think a different way, is my opinion, uh, that why I don't necessarily regard such things as the Second Amendment as so powerful. It's ultimate, but it's not really so powerful. And I see that de defeated everywhere. I've talked to you about that. I don't want to get lost. Moving into different technology, what we can buy into. Withdrawn. 5G technology and induction of coronavirus in skin cells was a story that made the rounds. I saw this. I took note of that. The first thing that bothered me was that coronavirus attaching to this. And I said, so here's another problem. In reading through this withdrawn 5G, listen, folks, all y'all that believe that 5G technology does something, it's, good. it's harming you. This is just feeding you like crazy with that title. 5G technology and induction of coronavirus in skin cells. Pretty astounding. But at any rate, because uh, the way I read stuff, I was a lot, a lot questioning that. In fact, I started to have to put on my mind. I said, okay, how'd they get there? Because why? Coronavirus, well, what, it's just a common cold. It, it's existed before 5G, first of all. Secondly, how did they test that? Number one. Number two, coronaviruses are chemical payloads. How did 5G amass a chemical payload that looked like a virus? And not, again, viruses are not biological. They're, they're chemistry. They're, they're chemical weapons if they're weaponized. And anyway, so the, the title really got me. I want to point this out as something 
that needs to be very carefully looked at if you if you were going to buy into it. I noticed not so many people bought into it, which thankfully, but I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people I don't talk to me or don't I don't see that are going to wrap this up. These are the kinds of reports we don't want to embrace or at least analyze them for where the failures are and wait for more information. As you go through this this report, for as astounding as it is, 5G technology induction of coronavirus, as astounding as that might feel for an agenda-driven mind and not someone who's focused on 5G as the actual harms of 5G, the things that are not looked at that are covered over by thermal evidence that doesn't show a harm. Uh, this, to me, looked like an attack on the underlying possibility of induction harms due simply to resonant structures. As I've talked to you behind the woodshed is fact. And this you need to read this if you you need to see how someone I think I think this is a deception. Uh, I think it's something not to trust. You need to see how someone cobbled together some things and attempts to make the case to do ultimately what? They ultimately try just to make a model of how this might happen. And they talked about the 5G causes a hole, which then is constructed in two different dimensional structures to pull the virus in there and create it. First of all, if you understand if a hole is being created, that that's cavitation. And if you understand what it causes, what we cre- what it needs to create cavitation in a cell, uh, likely the demands inside that cell are more than any chemical composition can be made. Cavitation is used as a, can be used as a destructive force. And so right off the bat, I had trouble with how you make this hole in a cell, if not by cavitation, because it should just be an assembly. You start to pick up and discern the cues of dishonesty or misapplication. It's as if someone was trying to write this to make you, well, to make you believe it. Most of which the science they respond to, they never describe that they could have described, because it's known, at least known to the limits of science, to be certain physical responses in nature that are valid and reproducible. They never responded and added those to this statement. So, getting to the point of this, 5G technology and induction of virus skin cells seem quite to fill the bill for most people relative to the 5G and coronavirus. I said, I've told you, don't go there. This story tries to. What my concern now is, this is the same type of thing. You bring up this 5G and coronavirus. Anybody who buys into this, they bite the bait. Next thing is you got to, you're going to have a big logs clubbing your head while while you're chomping on this bait when they defeat this whole thing. And what gets lost in this is the underlying foundation of studies that needs to get done. If they bite on this coronavirus induction creation principle and they destroy it. What they will never do if that gets any wind is they will never look at the induction inside the cell by any radiation source, which is really what we still have to look at. And so just a word to a warning, I would say, uh, somebody comes out and identifies that PubMed leaps into pseudoscience links 5G coronavirus from extreme tech. Uh, this story is a link you can read. He opens up exact relatively similar to what I was saying relative to the science statement. What I found interesting is he's got his own agenda, and he falls off pretty quickly as well in his own discussion. And we may say things in certain ways and describe what we see. Uh, I guess I could say I could have wrote down a little bit more discussion on exactly the things. I'm not into doing that for you all. If you want to, we could discuss how, if you wanted to write a paper and to discern how this might be, but I don't even know where where you'd use a deception like this at this point. He finds deception. He calls it pseudoscience. It wasn't even that. But he also denounces the fact that resonant structures can be resonantly uh, interfered with. And that's what I focused on. This was a problem, too. So we all have our ideas and we all have our opinions. But my view is we need to find out, for those of you in 5G, we need to find out what's going on with this technology. It either does stuff or it doesn't. Absolutely, there's science behind resonant induction, whether that's electromagnetic or physical. And no one wants to look at these things. He wants to dismiss the fact that the corona, I think this article, dismiss the fact that there can be a binary weapon where you can use frequencies. Well, I remember reading that as admission in 1976, information you probably never find in newspaper articles as they explained to us the tests that were done in the 50s. How I even knew about it. And so we have the 
evidence that there is a cause and effect. We have the science that 5G uh, modes might, but you, there's no study and no money that wants to come in to study that. that. That's where our problem is, that something like linking coronavirus, the scare fear-mongering, with this legitimate potential is, can be used to cover up what we need to know. And to me, this is just another one, another example of the others I've talked today, that you put up something up front, and then you've got the agenda running, and then that agenda is not only running, but it's actually defeating the ability to catch the agenda. Like I said, there's no test. Well, that's not the end at all. That's what I talked to so I can keep it in a soundbite. There's no test. There's no transmission mode. There's no science in causation once you figure out that it can be. there's a transmission mode. It could be a transmission of inert uh, interest. And yet, here we are. Same thing. Here, you, you defeat this cover, and pretty soon you don't. no one wants to come to look at the actual potential underneath it. And I'm focused on this resonant interaction because my experience is I've used the technology to do things with it in a biological level, in a chemical level, in an interactive level. And so my small amount of dabbling has exposed to me there's a cause and effect between energy and structures. At any rate, so I want to, I want to caution us. Be careful on the information coming out. They're trying to link 5G with corona in a study. Don't Please don't fall for it just by, oh, there it is. Do your own analysis. Apply your knowledge to it. Discern whether or not it's valid. Discern maybe parts that are. In this case, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd want to even more than read it and understand. It's an example of how people can be deceived. And I want to add the part that if you're deceived in the surface um, the sensationalism, you're going to be careful that they're not trying to steal the foundation from which you may actually have harms that aren't pub aren't studied and that are not wanted to be studied. And I say it that way because. They haven't been, and every time they've been told, there hasn't been any studies coming of it. And I believe part of the answer is nobody wants to address 5G, let's say at the federal level, and point out the failure of the cumulative home, the unknown harm, the known interaction and science that would say that there's harm, and the failure of an agency to look at that to force that as being money spent to studies if that's where you wanted to go. And so, anyway, that's... um. I found interest in this study only because it's, it came along the deceptive route. It came to, um, you do have to have a little bit of observation in scientific things, but still, it, it, it was um, more of a tactic. And I, I'm trying to, I, again, I'm not trying to show you the news. Oh, look, I outed this bad, you know, this nasty deception. No, we take that. We take the fact that it exists. We, we analyze for what it's doing, and we and we parse out what it was trying to do because someone, somewhere, I think, doesn't want us to look at resonant structures, interference with our biological systems. I think there's enough evidence, that certainly, that I've seen that says we really should have been looking at that. And the, and the whitewash over that is another indication, not a proof, but an indication. The improper addressing that at the administrative level, I think, has allowed it to continue to be that way. And so for those of you in that field, consider that. I'd ask you, for those in, that, in the 5G field, please look very carefully and, and decide whether or not this is a, a real valid object. It, it only wants to be a model, ultimately, but even so, uh, be careful with it before you just plop it down as some kind of a proof that someone's investigating. Because this doesn't, to my mind, it doesn't even rank high enough to even get the F, uh, the FA... Um, the FCC to even look at it. it. It doesn't even meet meet that standard either. That's the other thing. It doesn't meet the administrative standard of failure to to take a hard look at it. And so, if you were to move it into court, the court wouldn't even wouldn't pick it up either. And so, moving in and on as they move these covers to move the agenda underneath, and we get focused on the upper side, not knowing that the parties involved are really the, playing the you know the good cop bad cop things. I, I was discussing this Portland stuff. The state of Oregon is just as criminal as the feds doing what they're doing. People, it makes it look like, they make it look like the, the state's trying to protect the people. And I see the comments, oh, how does the state not have standing? 
well, go look at the case. Go look at what they're doing, and then go look at the real, the actual nuts and bolts of what's going on. This is another facade. They're moving something else through. They're actually helping each other to move, it seems to me, certain styles of control through. Whether it's ultimately lockdown that you see, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's that they get the next, again, hindsight's twenty twenty. We got to see the incremental nature of what they did with the first fraud called 9-11. Oh, boy, I got some peaked ears there, didn't I? Well, how do you know? It, t- it doesn't matter. They're, they used it, and they, and you fell for it. And they brought it in by 2012 to lock you all down indefinitely. I went to crickets. Now, hindsight 2020, I told you it was happening as we went into the year, and here it is. I think the track record's pretty good that we've got a problem that we're going to have to rise up and respond to. And with the force that's coming now down into into being, and aided, I think, by the states, We've got a different mentality to put on, or a different hat to put on in approaching all of this. I'm, I'm trying to, I don't like it sensational on, the, on all that. I think there's some fundamental things that we need to learn about before we start taking action anyway. That's also part of what I offer, what I do. Uh, the ongoing condition of this is an economic attack. If you didn't know it, uh, this COVID thing did that to the whole world. Uh, please notice that. And then we hear more of what they wanted to do. They needed to have control in your economic function. And we have now the Bank of England governor signals central bank's digital currency is coming. That's not even news. I just want to tell you there's the notice. They're not backing off. This is not even a question now. Uh, They agree that this is coming on you. And again, as I told you before, this is part of what was already in Agenda 2030's goals for 2030. It's coming on you. This is not stopping it's not stopping because you're locked down. But well, heck, all the people in Washington don't even have to wear a mask. They get to function as normal. Why is that? And you're supposed to be the posterity in control? I don't see much of that. And yet you'll say, oh, I don't have much control. No, you have all the control once you start to step up. And I have to say improper ways because I've seen in my history of looking at people do things, there's tons of improper ways to go. And I found much more efficacy to go through the the narrow path of what was observed before. Like I've been telling you about the habeas. Go read about them. Go find out what they did. Take your statements in the context of what they offer, what the remedy does, and you're going to do a whole lot better than trying to make up what you think ought to be. So, in the vein of this con, this uh, you see now the Bank of England, uh, England, that's the crown, now telling you their digital currency is coming. We know you can, we talked, the choir would say, oh, yes, it's coming. Uh, I don't see anybody tossing their phones down, but that's okay. It's coming. Then we get this little story. And this became very, very interesting, partly to me. It was more of a, an opinion piece coming out to tell us something. Now, what I'm going to say is completely just an observation and some of the conjecture that goes on with it. I hear, and part of this, you'll, I see lots of people saying this is a negative issue completely. And on the surface of it, with the new technology, in fact, it is. But there's a there's a certain thing that was exposed back in the 90s or so, which a lot of people run with today, uh, trying to figure out where where their money is and what's going on, that actually starts to funnel back into this story. Uh, on the outside, again, on the outside, the way it's being implemented against us is terrible. However, there is a way to look at this when it's not so bad, and uh, the numbers would add up. Astonishingly, for all the numbers we're talking about, the things I can't comprehend are still accounted for. Fed accounts for all. was a story out of Market Watch. Fed accounts for all. Think about this now. now my, I was like, whoa, <laughs> they're actually going to bring this out? Uh, this is an opinion piece. But th- this is also, they bring this out, it's like a trial balloon. Don't, don't know where this is going to go or how much is going to go. With the automatic and reoccurring payments triggered by the economic crises, wealthy interests have thrived during the pandemic. The CARES Act authorized trillions in spending to wealthy support wealthy people and corporations. Most of the money was used to guarantee liquidity for banks and hedge funds, backstop corporate balance sheets, and purchase debt to save commercial loan markets. Overall, 82% of the $170 billion tax provision included the stimulus legislation benefited individuals making more than $1 million a year. So you're asking, where's yours? Well, that was that $1,200 of pittance that they gave you. Uh, but at any rate, 
So this story goes on and talks and talks and says and comes up to the fact that relative to your $600 lifeline for a federal unemployment benefits and expiring, and then the $1,200 checks authorized under the CRES Act, uh, all those long gone, and despite having received direct aid, most states and cities are, will be facing a cash crunch, which could lead to massive layoffs and cuts to critical social services. There's your little hook for the benefits. If these issues were not enough, President Donald Trump is demanding that school districts bring students back with without the billions and resources needed to do so safely. So they're going to continue, this opinion continues, the contrivancy called COVID. The federal government, quote, the federal government's job is to, is to spend, to, uh, to stimulate the economy during a crisis, and we know this strategy works. Now Congress must do the same for working people and for communities across the country. All right? Sounds pretty cool. The next stimulus package must extend the unemployment benefit and provide a reoccurring guaranteed income of $2,000 per month to create free bank accounts at the Federal Reserve called Fed accounts for every American and supply state and local governments with ongoing cash payments and ensure the future economic crisis trigger automatic payments. I'm going to stop there. You can read more. Pretty interesting. Fed accounts. Talk about in control. I can't believe that's going to be cash either. So we have the negative side of this is they are talking about what ultimately, but universal basic income. They're also talking about in the concept, context of unemployment benefits. So if you're self-employed or have to declare that you are and keep your books, now they got you tacked into the tax. And don't forget, this is the tax condition too. And this is the negative side, the bottom, the off side of this. But the, you're seeing the digital world coming, and they're going to entice you and induce you to be in the unemployment system. And they're saying at this point they're offering $2,000 a month. So it's a big, you got to understand, this is a big inducement for the most of society to be brought in thinking they're being helped. Some would say, where do they get the money? Well, let me go through a little bit of that, too. Remember, it's all it's all made up. I told you in 2000, when in 2008 they went to toxic funds and they essentially monetized fraud. I said it would all deal. There's no basis whatsoever to limit. And then you, I told you, watch watch the debt just climb because there's no limit. And you've watched that. This has all all been happening. So being able to fabricate any amount of money is really it's not even a trick now. Remember, we also, and I reported on, when they were going to shut down the government, it came out that every expenditure of the federal government is GDP. Whether they, it produces anything or not, the dollar, the, the, the beans that it counts, to the benefit of the people, are considered gross national, project, national product. And so right there, it's not hard to see, and they add the debt onto what they have available, then you have this full faith in credit that kicks in. It's got no definition. It moves forward. And so the there is no basis, actually, anyway, that they can offer any amount. I found 2000 to be interesting. At some point, how to, people that, uh, I guess they've got it calculated like everything else. Remember, the bean counters behind this. Remember, if you lose an eye, they only pay you like 10000 15000 Someone's decided what you're worth. And I want to focus a bit on that as we move this through. How could they spend $2,000 a month uh, for everybody on unemployment benefits? Well, first of all, you're in the system. You're actually a taxpayer, and all that stuff has to kick in. But there's another side of the ledger that they research seemed to find back in the 90s. And that was called, and not through the Fed, and this is the interesting movement over to the Fed, called the Treasury Direct Account. Some people did some research. Some of the links to that were not so good. But there's been a lot of research, and it had a lot of excitement, that there was a treasury account established when you were born, partly what this bank note birth certificate's about, that looking at you as a, again, capital investment, the government, the people, invested in you in this document some form, some of money. 
And that becomes, goes onto the market, since this is a commercial enterprise, this United States, it goes into the market and gets invested for the things you need and will be contributing to and to, the, to your benefit as you move along as a member of this society. And so they attributed in the future your worth to, to the society and what it was going to have to do based in, again, the, the amount of money that they're spending uh, to, to protect you, essentially, and give you these benefits, whether you want to agree to them or not, is going to have a value that they then monetize, they put it in the system, and then they start investing. Now, I want to go back a long time. Some of you weren't maybe alive. A lot of you were. A long time ago, when I was looking at going and getting into the world, I said, well, what would I need? Uh, what would I, at the time, the bank accounts were given like 4 or 5% interest. What would it take? What would, how much would I have to have in the bank in an interest-bearing account to have money that I could just earn on interest and survive uh, comfortably? And at the time, it was uh, about a million dollars would give you about $33,000 a year. And I said, okay, that's an interesting thing. So I could put a million dollars in a bank and get $33,000 just in interest back on that, doing nothing more than just taking the government's position, not had a thought then at all. That's just what you did. And I could survive, and at the time, money went quite a far, quite a piece. $33,000 a year, I could then actually decide to step back from the world and say, take it easy for a while, and when I want to get back in, I could jump back in and do my thing. So the bottom line was a million dollars in the bank not being used would derive interest. In other words, they're using that money somewhere else to make more. It would derive to me $33,000 a year. Let me put you now, bring you up people who can't understand how this money would actually work. If that million dollars, and the, the uh, Treasury Direct accounting on the birth certificate, I think was found to be about 600000 but that number wasn't proven. I'm just saying that there's this, this value, okay? It's quite a bit. The government extended to every baby that was in certificate on a banknote, and partly how, what I call like the merit talk, you, you have merit as, as, as being part of the society. Someone invested that in preparation of you coming into the world. And I'm talking on the, not no na not any negative here, I'm just talking on the positive that the economy could have been, capitalizing people in the positive, giving them credit for being and what they will do, preparing the place for them to do that. Notwithstanding what we see today, I'm not talking in this, that part, I'm not talking in, in what the reality turns out to be, but what's sitting back there and how this all could happen. If they put a million dollars, a bank, a million dollar accrual in the asset because you came into the world, what they were going to provide to you and what you would kick back, and they would put that in a note and put that in the market and start investing it, that was supposed to be paid back to you at $33,000 a year in interest, like a bank, if it was a regular bank, and these people in the money side are doing a whole lot more than just 5%, I can tell you, that that money you they never paid to you until you were an adult would have accrued in interest for, what, 18 years. And that was sitting you up as far as the system was concerned on their books, how you would be able to interact and everything would be copacetic with, with what's going to happen and go on. Not, not thinking in the negative here, like what they're going to exact from you. Now, let me just get back to the, thousand, the million dollars in the bank account. If every year you earned $33,000 a year and they didn't pay you, that would be accruing into an account somewhere and be put on the market for more more uh, investment. Now, some people have found those accounts. Some people have found that your Social Security number is attached to a money market account of some sort and that there's there's dealing going on with it. Now, I haven't heard too much beyond that. I've heard seen a couple things. But anyway, let's move along on that idea. They put a million dollars. They've accru accredited a million dollars in a birth certificate, or a birth note of your birth certificate, to benefit you ultimately. But then they lied to you and didn't give that to you. Let's go to today. Someone's broaching that idea. If they have put a million dollars that's been accruing for all your life into a bank account, and if even a million dollars re returns five, uh, 33000 do you think they could cover the 2000 a month that they're talking, that, that they're broaching here? I certainly think they can with a little bit over. That could be your medical care, and that could be on top things on top of it. Why? Because that's just the interest on the money they're investing and running. How much money is that? Mind-boggling amounts of digits and beans. But it doesn't matter. It's all accounted for. The ledger is balanced. No, the lie has been that they've had this. The count has been going on, but the lie has been they never gave this to you. They're actually bro possibly broaching they could, and this is going to be the setup for a universal basic income. Where there's no negatives, I don't see the downside. 
This was supposed to be invested for you when you went out in the world and you benefited society. This was the this was the essentially the payment for doing that. To setting up the people before us set this system up to do that. The problem is someone got got a hold of this system and now said, well, we can put these guys underneath uh, what we'll call as universal basic income. We'll give them just enough to survive, and then we'll dictate how that money is going to be spent, where it gets spent on essentials and non-essentials, and then the price that we control, which is the negative side. Getting back to the positive side, if I'm doing $33,000 a year on an invested, a million dollars and put it away in my name, and there's $33,000 a year on interest alone, they could pay me the money and not touch the, the million dollars and or the extra that they could continue to, to invest. Uh, Vince, it's not necessarily a Ponzi scheme. This was an investment that it's done, uh, you collateralize you, you people. And I don't mean that in a negative way, like they're sucking energy from you. So there is a, a logic behind what they have done there on the on a good side. I was pretty intrigued. I, had to, I looked at this a long time ago, and it made it made a very interesting point for us. The fraud was that we weren't being told. It's not disclosed to us. They might be telling us that that could happen here. The problem is they're going to couch it in something that's not quite right. And like I look down and see inflation is the tax that can't be avoided. Yeah, that's true. And that would be the other condition and that we're not on the negative side. And again, though, if you're paying, being paid, but money that you're, that was accrued to you because of the system, someone, somebody was uh, to your benefit putting money and you're the beneficiary of the interest. There's also, there's, there's no tax on that. And then if you're intelligent, you can do things to mitigate that as well. Okay. So I'm not saying that there's anything out of that. But moving over here. So to my mind, it's not ludicrous to think that if that was the case and that was the actual system we haven't been t disclosed of, that they could actually pay you $2,000 a month. And it would just be the interest that they've been owing you the whole time. It's all the money that's been in the system reinvented and reinvested and reinvested. Things like what Clint Richardson was finding. How you can have that, gobs and gobs of money. How this thing really works. It's just this invention that everybody's accepted since 2008 when they, when they monetized Fraud. If they can monetize fraud, they certainly can monetize your capital and investment in you as a baby that's documented by a certificate. Not going down the negative trail of that. I just want to point out there's a plausible explanation how that $2,000 a month is not necessarily out of line relative to what might actually have been there that they've been denying to people. A thought to you, okay? Something that I'd like to see us maybe work toward, because that would be more of the meritocracy type issue. We have merit in the world. We produce in the society. We're too produced. It's to make, allow us, not make us, because we would just do what we want. We, oh, I don't need to work this week. We don't have to, because the system is not operating on us. But we have the opportunity to be walking into a system that's made for us to do our own exploitation, but in the better sense, like a miner would exploit a, de exploit a mineral deposit. It takes a lot of work, has a lot of costs, but there's rewards at the end for doing the hard work. And that's what you're being, that's the benefit of being allowed to do that. I'm not saying we're enjoying that. I'm saying that there is a thought, there is a lineage of proof that says that that 2000 a, mo a month sits on an account already. It's not at the Fed, though. And that's the diversion, so you don't look at the real place. And there's a whole bunch of people that bought onto all this, that kind of did it the wrong way, that kind of made a bad name in all that. And I was a little disappointed to watch it because there's a fascinating um, fiscal condition that sits in there, and it takes the negatives off everything that's ever been found about it that I see pe lots of people arguing against. Initially, I looked at this. I don't want to. I don't have a Fed Reserve account. Why well, would I go to the Fed Reserve? The Treasury of the United States is where all this happens. But let's just say this is just—it's a, a, a balloon that's being flown. How would you accept that? I think if you saw what I've just said, and we could prove out a little bit better, more tightly the proof. I think we have an alternative to offer that doesn't bring the negative on us. If they want to do this to us, then we become part of that answer. And I think that's a better position going into the future for you all. Well, I'm not going to see none of that for you all than, than what I watched coming down through COVID, through martial law, through 
uh, uh, UBI, uh, universal basic income through austerity. And so we, we have an insight, I think, pulling things together that even if what I've said is not found, I offer as an insight to maybe make it so for the people. Not as welfare, not as unemployment, not as a derogatory condition, but it's what we've earned, like our own national resource. If we went to Alaska and the oil was granted to the people that were the residents there, and forget the negativism on the resident word, but you were there, you get the benefit of that natural resource. Is you in a treasury direct account. Someone invested in you. They built up a bunch of money for you. It was like a bank account they handed you, but you only get the interest of, for 18 years, the accrual of the interest was happening if you were to learn about it then. And so I want us to maybe have available, if they, someone wants to put in this offer, maybe not so hands-off and not so negative, maybe we should look a lot closer and say, okay, we'll take that lead, but this is where we want to go with it. And here's how you can. And so I hope I've offered a little bit of an insight. Certainly needs to be a little bit more work, but there was a lot of work done to prove out the basics for me to even see it to be able to say it today. I found this story very interesting. Completely want standoffish about the Fed account part, but the underlying possibility was much more the freedom that people were a lot, uh, provided for themselves that was more the truth that is being used as a weapon against us the disclosure of which would eliminate a lot of the strife, would invigorate the economy, and would bring us into not so much want. We certainly eliminate all the people that are victims, don't we? Pretty much. Unless there's those that can't help themselves, we've got plenty of help for those. So, anyway, just wanted to offer that as a thought. Uh, again, pretty interesting. Very cool. I don't know how much pressure was put to expose that here in the 90s. But here comes out the so-called Fed account. There's a Treasury Direct account already, I understand. It's already got your number on it. They're just not giving you the benefit of it, even as the interest invested. And then they make a ton more because they're putting it in the, in, the, in the system. The system uses it. Everything you know, the economy, the production is using that part. And, uh, 320 million a, a year, people, a year's worth of value is being reinvested. You tell me how much money that is when we all of a sudden saw the numbers going to quadrillion, telling us there's quadrillions out there. Mind be, bo mind boggling numbers, but someone's got a computer. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Anyway, don't want to sell that. I want us to be observant. Don't let them drive, if this is where we get to go, don't let them drive the wagon. We have to take control of that. And for those of you, the, the story that was extending over to Chinese companies got American bailout funds for all this, U.S. units of Chinese companies. Why didn't you? Okay, so you have the evidence they can do it to foreign, foreigners. Why not you? Not the attorney, no, my listener, and all the others that don't listen. And one more thing, running this thing, where this thing is go relative to me medical uh, tyranny, Africa to become, test, become testing ground for Trump's trust stamp Vaccine record and payment system. Payment system is tied into this account. Okay, this is the negative part of all this. There doesn't have to be that that connection. We can sever that if we just get activated. But on the horizon, they go to the uh, a country that's in strife, and they go there to impose what the future will be when you don't resist and do so properly. Thank you for listening today. Remember, thank you for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com and all that you do to keep us and let me to come in and. Hook up uh, real quickly, and Jules over at ucy.tv, thank you for the simulcast and the YouTube and Sound Minds and Normalization of Ignorance. And just in case, I'll get to you on the email. been overwhelmed a little bit on that. And everybody, thumbs up for the few of you that uh, do, and thank you at Sound Minds for doing that. It makes apparently raises the levels. I appreciate all that support. Anything you can do to get the word out, and emails that maybe guide what that might be relative to this notice of things we need to do. But I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>